And our final talk in this session before the discussion session is by George Lowenstein from Carnegie Mellon, who's going to talk to us about wanting and liking for sex by gender and age. A good way to end the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Tamar Krishnamurti, on, um, who's a graduate student in my department. Okay. So sex is important from a phys uh, physical, emotional health perspective. Sexual frequencies correlated with longevity, associated with better health. It's the activity that produced the highest happiness among a sample of 1,000 women. Those with no sex partners were very unhappy. And increasing sexual activity is um, from once a month to once a week is equivalent in terms of happiness of a pay raise of $50,000. <laughs> So I'm going to talk about the um, relationship between I'm going to talk about the relationship between wanting and liking um, for sex. From a decision-making perspective, you might think that these are equivalent. That is, that the more you like something, the more you want it. But in fact, there's a lot of research. Kent Baird really opened the door in this research, um, showing that there's often deviations between wanting and liking. Most of the research on wanting and liking has focused on people wanting something kind of too much, like um, over wanting, for example, drugs, and then not actually enjoying the drugs so much. In sex, you, of course, you have examples of that, but you also have examples of, I would argue, of the opposite, people um, liking sex. In fact, I'm going to show you some data on that and not particularly wanting it. So Tamar and I um, developed, their, we couldn't find any existing scales to measure wanting and liking for sex, and we developed these um, scales. I don't have time to show you the details, but here are the scales. They have high reliability. Um, we also wanted to, these, are, these scales relate to your wanting and liking of your partner. We only, we only looked at people who are in relation, long-term relationships, well, in relationships. Um, but we were also interested in general sex drive. So we also developed a um, scale to measure sex drive. We didn't like any of the scales that we found, so we developed our own. Um, the, in this presentation, I'm going to talk about um, Research, this is a second phase of, this is a second study we've done. This is with um, about 2,500 adults. And this was, um, we deliberately sampled males and females um, over the lifespan. And we oversampled older uh, males and females because we were interested in that especially. So here, just a few background um, s statistics. Um, I wish I could show you more. This is the frequency of sex by duration of relationship. Um, one, if they've been together less than um, a year, about once a week, by the time six to ten weeks, anyway, as you can see, not surprisingly, it drops off dramatically. Who initiates sex? Um, again, by duration of relationship, um, this is both initiate it equally. This is the male usually initiates it. And if you, um, both uh, males and females agree, agree that males tend to initiate sex, but males have a much more extreme perspective. Um, as they, the longer the relationship, the more males think that they initiate, um, are the ones to initiate sex. For, but females, the longer the relationship, the same pattern, but it's not as strong. Who controls when they, like, su suppose one wants to have sex, the other one doesn't. Who controls whether they do, do or do not have sex? Um, the, cl the best you get is kind of pretty close to both equally. Um, but this is a scale that go, um, generally both sides are in great agreement that the female controls um, when they have sex, and especially the longer they've been together, the more the female is in control of when the couple has sex. Okay, that's, real, that's kind of background just to give you a taste of the data. Um, now I want to focus on specifically on the wanting and liking. Um, and what we see is um, first, um, pretty different um, patterns of wanting by age. So these are um, males, their wanting um, score. Um, you can see that wanting drops as a function of age, and, but it drops more dramatically for females than for males. The pattern is a bit different for liking. Liking, again, they both drop with um, age, but here there's, um, it's much more similar for males and females. So if you compare these two, it seems that um, the big difference between males and females over the lifespan is on the wanting side, how much they want to have sex, not on how much they actually like sex if they have it. Um, looking at the same, pat the same two variables by duration of relationship, these are um, males, these are um, females. 
So wanting, the, the females are wanting sex much less, their drop off in wanting is um, much more dramatic as a function of how long the relationship is than the males. My um, female friends joke that it's because males are impossible. So, um, and so, of, of course, if you've been with a male for 10 years, you're going to get sick of him and not want him anymore. But um, there might be other possible explanations for the. Um, but it, it, they start about the same place, but um, females drop off much faster. Again, the, li the patterns of liking are uh, more similar, although, again, um, for liking too, the women start out higher and end up lower. Um, we looked at the, core, the relationship between wanting and liking across um, people, and we found a, what I think is kind of an interesting pattern. Actually, I was showing the, these data to my undergraduates, and I suddenly um, better graph than this one, and I suddenly noticed this pattern, which is it's very, very unusual to want it if you don't like it. But it's very common not to like it, sorry, not to want it if you do like it. So liking without wanting is common, but wanting without liking is almost non-existent. So what we're really interested in is the relationship between wanting and liking. And so we normalized both um, variables across the entire sample. And then we look at the difference um, between them. And what you see is as people um, get older, the ratio of wanting to liking initially um, increases. People want it more relative to liking it, but then it drops off for males at are um, around 26 to 35. For females, it just seems to um, drop off um, right, you know, pretty steadily right from the beginning. If you look at um, duration of relationship, for the men, Wanting, they seem to want their partners more as a function of how long they've been together, and then it drops off. Kind of a um, similar pattern. We run regressions to parse the, uh, the effect of both variables out simultaneously to see what's going on. Um, duration generally seems to be more important than age, but, um, but it's a bit more complicated than that. OK. Um, just some other, um, fi some other findings. We looked at the relationship between mental health, physical health, subjective happiness, and satisfaction with life as a function of demographics and also sex variables, sexual frequency, and sexual liking. And sexual liking is a very powerful um, predictor of mental health, subjective happiness, satisfaction with life. Of course, you don't, know how the core, you don't know how the causality goes, but I think these are pretty interesting, super, super strong effects. Sexual frequency, but not sexual liking, is a, is a predictor of physical health. We are now, um, if you look, if you generally look at the, there's a very, very strong relationship between sexual frequency, happiness, and health. Nobody knows why that's happening. So Tamar and I, in another study, we're doing the first experimental study to, to try to understand um, causality. We're randomly assigning couples to either have their normal level of sex or to double their frequency of sex. Um, we're about two thirds of the way through the study and we are, um, all I can tell you at this point is that um, our experimental treatment is working. The people who are supposed to have more sex are following instructions. They are um, approximately doubling their sex. We don't, I don't know anything about the dependent measures yet. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I think generally there seem to be a lot of benefits to sex. Um, and, but, Unfortunately, wanting, even though, um, p even though both males and females seem to maintain their liking for sex to, to a great degree, the wanting seems to drop off pretty um, seriously. So I think it um, raises the question of how, to, um, how can you, to improve health, to improve quality of life, how is it possible to maintain wanting? We've started looking at that um, in this data set that I've already been telling you about. Um, so we look at, um, a we look at age. Uh, Oh, sorry, this is duration of relationship. What you see that um, for people, we look at what variables predict what couples are going to maintain their wanting over time. These are couple, and these are couples who don't keep discovering new things about their partner. These are um, part, um, couples who just keep discovering new things about their partner. Their partner is kind of mysterious to them. That seems to be one element of maintaining wanting. Trying new things, something as basic as trying new things um, sexually, 
here's if you don't try new things, here's if you um, do. That seems to make a difference. We're, this is the very, very initial stage. It's a, it's a huge, very rich data set. Um, but um, I think it has a lot, there's a lot of interesting stuff in it. Okay. Thank you. Time for a question? Okay. Time for a couple of questions on the top. Do you, so I, I saw that there's a discrepancy over time with men and women in wanting, but the liking was very similar. Do you think that men are, uh, you like sex to the extent that your partner might be liking sex? So do you think it, that's what's yeah. driving it? Is that if the women aren't liking it, then maybe the men are yeah. getting, you know, or they're just unsatisfied with how often they're getting it? What do you think is? Yeah, we, um, one of the things we looked at was the, um, we asked questions about how excited is your partner by you and how excited are you by your partner. And we found that um, the patterns were very interesting. Can I reproduce what they were? Um, for women, I can't, I can't remember what they are, but I can tell you that um, it's very, the, both wanting and liking men and women the, the relationship between how excited you think your partner is by you and how excited you are by your partner, it makes a very big difference for wanting and for liking and for men and for women. I, unfortunately, I don't remember the exact pattern, but I remember it was very interesting. Sorry. Dave? Uh, question, have you looked in the NSHOP data for anything related to these kinds of sexual behavior questions, uh, National Social Life Health and Aging Project? It, it was designed for to understand the sexual health of older adults. It has a lot of these kinds of things. It might be of interest. That's a great suggestion. Thank yeah, you. I mean it's there and available. You can okay. get your hands on. So there's a lot there. Add your measures. I mean it's longitudinal. Okay. Right. Yeah. Although they, I think our there's no uh, MRI, fMRI, but that's maybe it should be. Yeah, we looked for um, we looked for the similar measures and didn't find them. Yeah, it would be. But we'll definitely take a look at the data set. Yes. You started with marriage, uh, you know, distinction. So could you, and even thinking about reframing them in terms of those, I wasn't sure where you stood on that. Could you sort of distance them anyway? You said this isn't really addiction, but then it's sort of like addiction. Huh. Can, can you reframe them in, in those terms in terms of the different underlying circuits and how that might play out for Well, I think I'm so. Bar um, Barrage has been arguing that the neural circuitry for wanting and liking are overlapping, but to some degree distinct. And so this raises a, an interesting question. You know, of course, you don't know whether the wanting and liking circuitry for sex is the same as wanting and liking circuitry for other things. But again, there must be an overlap. Yeah, there must be an overlap. I mean, and it would be very interesting to look at the neural correlates of these patterns, because they are very strong patterns. It should have been more concrete. What I was saying is it would make it very interesting to look at people who were old, but were in new, new couples. Yeah. Because yeah, that would be the, the critical question, I would think, to begin to see you know, whether it's age or... Well, we're, do we're doing that with regression. Yes. Yeah. We can, we can already end, um, and we've been so running... Age or duration? Du um, duration is more important than age, generally. And again, there are gender differences in that. But generally, when you put both variables into the regression, the um, age is less important than duration, which is kind of sad, maybe. Yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just think it's so interesting, the discrepancy between wanting and liking for women uh, as opposed to for men. So. So they, they like it just as much as men do, or maybe almost as much, but when they have it, but they don't want it. And so why is that? I mean, you could think of like an affective forecasting problem there, um, or recall biases, and, and actually made me think of your hot, cold research, that That's the women are more likely to be in these sort of cold states where they, it's like they can't remember or imagine that, yes, last time I had sex actually was really great, right. so you don't want it, yeah. whereas the yeah. men don't seem to have, why is that? They, they don't seem to hot. have. Because they're well, in a hot state. <laughs> <laughs> well, in, a, in, a paper, in a paper I wrote in 1996, um, which is an academic paper, but I stuck in this bizarre um, paragraph about sex lives of married couples. And I talked exactly about this um, phenomenon, 
that if you've been together with someone for a long time, you might still enjoy sex, but you're no longer aroused. So there's a hot, cold empathy gap. You're in a cold state. It's very difficult to imagine what it would um, being in a hot state when you're in a cold state. And so um, in this paper, I say that the um, prescription is that you should have sex whether you're in the mood or not, because you'll probably end up um, enjoying it. Yeah. So why don't we yeah, bring okay, you back thank you. to the table with the rest of the